All right, so welcome back, guys. I did get a, looks like I got a request to do a, a walk around on my 52 Plymouth, uh, the Plymouth Slug, I call it. Uh, there's a lot to go over, so basically I'll just go over the, the body and what I did uh, to modify the body, and then I'll do another video of the engine and the drivetrain and what I did to build all of that, put it together. Um, I do have other videos of this car as well at the drag strip and some build, uh, uh, build other build information and when I got it first started I had a video on that as well um, but before we get started if you guys could uh, please like and subscribe if you do and you wish um, I could really use it if I could hit a thousand subscribers that would be pretty awesome um, so let's get to it Now it is a 52 Plymouth, I think it was a Cranbrook. I bought this car for $150 with a title. Now the 52, if you look up a 52 Plymouth, they're not a very good looking car. Pretty square roof line on them. Now this back window used to come straight up in the back, so I leaned it forward. But I really wanted to have a car with the engine in the wrong place. Now the four-door was a four-door, and the four-door is actually, I think, about 10 inches longer than the two-door. So the body in the, the frame has not been lengthened. The frame is stock. It's a long wheelbase car to begin with. But I shortened the front end of it like 18 inches because I got into the whole cab forward look for a little while. And then I, and because of that, See how the, the hood got narrower in the back there as I shortened it, so I had to build these little humps here to fill in the open gaps. And I wanted them to mimic the hood here to have a nice flow. And I love that grill. The grill's pretty cool, it looks kind of like a flounder. And then the sides of it, this, the body panels, I sectioned all of this about six inches. So I could only do about four inches in here and then two inches up here. Because if I did six in here, then these, these tires are all the way up to here right now. They would be up above. So I had to section in two different places. And then the fenders have not been cut, so I let them hang down about two inches, which fills in the gap for the exhaust pipes. Pretty nice. then the rear window is, is laid down of course way down and i think i chopped it about three and a half and four inches in the back three and a half in the front that's kind of where i like to chop cars in the three to four inch range i wanted a slight taper even the body has a slight taper i just remembered so it's about six inches in the front and six and a half in the rear so if you look at the car the whole car has a taper to it And you can see here, all of this is new sheet metal. See, the cars usually are 18 gauge. So I did the doors and everything at 20 gauge. It's a little thinner, a little bit lighter, and it was easier to work with for me with basic tools. I did have a, uh, 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 a brake available, so I was able to make some sharper bends with it. That was about it. But I wanted the lines to be really tight, really smooth. So when you buy sheet metal, it comes in four by eight sheets. So these are four feet wide, each one of these door panels. So I did it the long way so I didn't have to cut any of the seams on the doors. So you see how, how perfect they are. I didn't want weld marks in them or anything. So that took a lot of time doing this because I wanted these to be as perfect. Some of it is moved with me drag racing and stuff moved around a little bit, but I wanted them as perfect as I can get. The, this roll here was done on a giant piece of pipe, just very meticulously trying to get it right, work it right, and then bend all these angles. The bottom is uh, is even been bent under as well to get those line, get everything to line up perfect. Just took some time. I only damn wrecked one door trying to do this, so it really took my time and measured a hundred times to get it right. Still pretty dang good. Uh, 
and my goal was to have a car with no posts and then I had to suicide the rear doors so I was able to do that no post it's all wide open one piece that was my vision okay so let's see let's go to the back here all right now the back see all these pie cuts in here when I cut two inches out of the top when it came down everything had to meet again through here so I had to pie cut all of this and pull it in gently to get them everything to line up again see how the fenders hang down about four or six inches down Ooh, all kinds of oh that's rubber <laughs> then I'll get into this later but that's a in, in and out box or like a V drive but I had it built for this car so it's kind of what they use in trophy trucks it's not out of a boat stock tail lights kind of like those wings how they kind of hang down like that looks pretty neat <clears throat> Let's get into this side here now uh, for of course uh, this is a drag race car so you had to have follow some rules <clears throat> I'll get into that next time with the roll cage and everything uh, once you run up to a 10 second 10 0 class and I do have to have a handle that's accessible inside and outside the car so they usually are here I got swing outs on it that I built I'll get into that later but here's the door panel, so I didn't want any uh, uh, weld marks on these panels at all. And they're pretty thin, so they probably wouldn't handle it too well. So this is, uh, I forget how big this stuff is, maybe quarter inch or so square tubing. It's eighth inch wall. And uh, then it's all uh, uh, body panel adhesive is holding it all to the frame. And then a couple rivets on the bottom where it tucks under. And then a couple rivets in here just for safekeeping then I if I had to remove the panel I can uh, drill out the rivets and then take a knife down the sides and just peel the panel right off of it but let's hope that never happens and then the back suicide and I got screen door cylinders here so they lock Right now they're full of dirt, so they're not locking. But you can see how dirty this thing was from the last trip I made. It's getting pretty bad. I need to go through this thing and clean it all up again. I used one of those uh, on the patina. I used one of those products. I've used several products that claim it's a wipe on clear and it'll seal it up and this and that. But it, none of that stuff works. The only thing that's going to work is a real automotive clear coat with a hardener. So I'm going to clean all this up again and and have to actually spray it. And uh, man, now looking at it in this video, it's filthy. I put these things on a little while back, mainly for the neighbors, just to keep it a little quieter. And for my head, this thing's so noisy. You have to wear earplugs in it when you drive it around. But it sounds awesome. So, yeah, so here's the, the whole deal with the frame they're very strong frame they don't twist or move incredibly lightweight i just this is a plastic mesh i just stuck on there and then i used uh, i think these are i forget what these came out of a ford or chevy or something like that door latches where i got those from or maybe they came out of the plymouth but Anyway, so I got the rig those up. It's all mounted solid to the roll bar. The roll bar houses everything. So then the bottom half of the, the floors were pretty rotten in this thing and the bottom of the doors. So when I sectioned it, I cut all the bottom, bad bottom half out of it. So the floor, all we have in the front is aluminum floor, half floor in the front. You can see the wheel wells right here. It's a pretty tight fit. I do got to fold one leg a bit, but it's not too uncomfortable it's from what it looks like. I'm not quite six feet and I fit in there pretty good. Five, nine range. So, <clears throat> um, 
and then this is a, a 3 16th steel I believe angle iron I use this as a support for the whole body and then it's got stringers welded to the original frame and then out to here that these are square tubing eighth inch wall I believe like right here this piece if you can see it I can't see with this camera too well myself but uh, yeah so four by four square or three by three holds it this thing doesn't twist at all of course the roll cage helps I run it all the way down the back from the front through the roof all the way down it's a big structural part of the car and then these legs will come out and I can pull the engine out through the side but I got my uh, spring latches and then a safety strap latch as well for these doors so these doors to keep them centered I got bump stops here that I made out of door stops and then I got roller wheels here these rollers are used like on uh, chains on dirt bikes and stuff like guide chains little mini rollers so I can adjust these stops but this roller will hit that and roll on that body and center the door up it's pretty close but center it up and then stop on its own like that you can see it's it's a pretty good fit I wanted it to be completely flat no no waves in it or anything and then the little little mirrors side mirrors is that things work really good okay let me take the hood off real quick I was working on some things it doesn't overheat but it gets a little warm on the highway sometimes I'm running one-to-one -one boost but uh, so I rigged up some cardboard and was working on a few things on airflow and it did help a lot to really seal all this off in here to really get the air through here back here it's not a whole lot I can do there's not a lot of room back here so I think I'm getting some airflow stuck behind the radiator here um, there's not a whole lot I can do about it but I've driven this thing pretty far before it'll get up to about 210 on the highway after a good drive and it cruises 350 gears so it cruises may I forget just under three grand not too bad so I'll probably get a little turbulence behind there preventing some airflow I could get another mini radiator put it somewhere but this thing doesn't really, I don't do long distance in it necessarily. It takes a long time to get there though. I can drive an hour or so before it creeps up to 210 on a, on a warm day, hot day. But other than that, it, it runs fine. It cools just fine. Runs good on the street. I run it on pump gas on the street as long as I don't go full boost with it. And then I use 100 octane on lead it at the racetrack. I don't know if I forgot anything. Oh, in the roof. In the roof, see, you can see here, some of the lines right here and right here. That's about 18 inches. That's about what I took out of the front. So with the stock frame length, I just pretty much moved the whole cab forward on the frame, added 18 in the middle, and then built the doors and, and stuff and cut most of the floor out of it for good. But this is square tubing inside of here to hold all this up structure and then I got some square tubing bars across the top there because gravity kept wanting to pull this thing down that was a hard time welding all that to keep it from uh, dimpling and warping and doing stuff like that and it did but I, I could heat up spots and th this and that and shrink and stretch it and got it all worked out so there's a seam there seam there there's a seam across the back here and I 
the weld around the window. And I built the, the air scoop. The doors close really firm, really nice. Use the stock hinges for the Plymouth. Those are uh, 10 inch wide wheels in the back. It's a custom diff that I built out of two diffs. I'll get into that on the next video too. Yeah, I'm right at about a 10.0 so far. I do want to get into uh, some of the uh, fuel additives that you can buy, real octane boosters, and some of the problems I've seen with that stuff. But uh, yeah, this hood is super light too. I, I gutted it and everything and then strengthened it with some flat bar on the edges. It's an eighth inch flat bar. Gave it a lot of strength and these are just the twist locks. And then I left, even though with the twist locks, I left the front hitch assembly on it too as a safety hitch just in case. And it's an aftermarket front suspension, tubular suspension. And that's electric brake booster, power brake booster. Works really well. This is a, a high flow fan out of, uh, they're pretty cheap, like 70 bucks. You can get them anywhere. They're like out of uh, uh, Thunderbirds, stuff like that. They're known for being really high power. They're two speed fan. You can see where I have to modify some of the firewall there. And then I kicked it in down there to give room for airflow the best I could. This part I had I couldn't because that's where my accelerator pedal is. So I try to get as much room as I could for airflow on the back side. But if I built maybe some a, a tunnel kind of directed down, it might keep from getting so much turbulence. But like I said, it's not really that big a problem. This thing is filthy dirty from sitting in the garage. And then of course for my Eagle Field event, look how rusty it's getting, it's getting bad. gives light to some of the work that I did on that car but I'll do another video we'll go over some more stuff if you have any questions about anything that I did or that that I missed that you want to see uh, just leave me a comment and um, I guess that's about it uh, let me know if you want to see something else like I said I got a lot of other videos of this car as well and a lot more stuff to come I got so many projects here that I want to do and uh, uh, just got to keep on working. I yeah, appreciate everyone for watching. Uh, come back, like, and subscribe. I need a thousand subscribers. All right, thank you. See you next time.